another edition of Pitch Brand Talk. I have with me today Mr. Shekhar Tiwari. He's the CEO at Modernic Lifestyle. Modernic Lifestyle was formed in 2021 when Dixie Textiles and Gopal Das in Intimate Wear came together in a bid to increase the scale of its inner wear and apparel business. To tell us more, we have Shekhar. Shekhar, welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Thank you, Simran. Thank you. Very nice being here with you. Shekhar, one of your marquee brands is obviously the Dixie Scott yeah. uh, inner wear range that you have. And you recently had uh, came out with a late new campaign for the Dixie Scott Body Ki Bhasha. Yeah. So what was the insight behind the campaign, if you could tell us? Okay. So Simran, this Body Ki Bhasha, this is this is 2.0. We we uh, when we repositioned the brand, when we took over, when you said Modnik was formed and Dixie and Enamor were both bought by a private equity giant Advent in the in a bid to unlock synergies and make them both grow together. We repositioned the brand at that point of time. We did some very good consumer work with uh, future brands, Santosh Desai and team. And the insight that came out of that was that your body is before you. You know, you, you enter a room for an interview or you just need somebody we all look at that person, look at the body language, look at the posture, look at the handshake, look at the confidence, and we create a certain mental map. So this is where this was the insight ki body ki ek bhasha hoti hai. And we are talking about a confident body. Now we'll say why, how does inner wear figure in here? So inner wear is the first piece of garment we wear in the morning and the last piece of garment that we remove, right? And a great fitting underwear can give you great posture, great body language. And conversely, an ill fitting or a badly designed underwear can give you discomfort throughout the day, which makes you uncomfortable and hence give you bad posture, or bad body language and can create un un embarrassing and un uncomfortable situations. So that was the insight. And that is how this body ki bhasha campaign was crafted. Shekhar, you have, uh, for this campaign, you have onboarded uh, Yashasvi Jaiswal and uh, Mohammad Siraj, popular cricketers. So what are yes. the synergies that you saw between your brand and the cricketers? Okay. So, so first of all, our, our brand is a economy mainstream brand. Now, this appeals to the large segment of the middle class and the lower middle class Indians who are aspiring every day to do better in their lives, who want to grow who have the confidence today, if you look at India in the last four, five, six years or 10 years, one thing that has changed dramatically in the way we perceive ourselves and the confidence that we as a country, as a race, as a people now have when we are on the world stage, right? Historically, if you, if you just go back 10, 20 years ago, uh, you know, the trappings of colonialism, so to say, English language is critical for success. For example, one of the basic things, if you remember Kapil Dev's rapid X ad long ago, you know, you know, so, you know, there are certain established societal mores that we say, you know, come confident people or success people are of a particular type. They speak in English. They dine in good restaurants. They are able to have, you know, English songs, English language. So everything which is really alien to you is something that over the years has been used as crutches to say how successful we are. What we are saying is that your innate confidence in your abilities and who you are truly decides how well you will do in life. And why we've taken cricketers? Because one thing that has changed in the last 10, 15, see, this is one thing we can say we are truly world leaders in cricket, right? Today, cricket, the whole economy, everything revolves around India and India actually decides what, how the agenda of cricket is, right? What has happened in the last 10, 15 years, if you see, is cricket used to be played in bigger cities. All the players used to come from Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, so-called established places. In the last 10, 15 years and with IPL, what has happened is youngsters, rookies come from small towns and they rub shoulders with the best in the business. They could be a Dale Stain, it could be a Pat Cummins, it could be a Michelle Stark, it could be A.B. de Villiers. And there are youngsters who come in, play on equal footing as them and they are able to express their talent. So what we said is that you do not need to have these external crutches to be confident and successful. Your body language comes from your confidence and that gives you the ability to be a winner. 
and hence these two youngsters they are both from very humble backgrounds yashasvi jaiswal we all know came from up stayed in the maidans and you know his story is all famous right and from those humble beginnings and today he is the toast of the nation he is a superstar batting sensation and so is siraj i mean he came from very humble background and uh, today these guys are uh, world beaters so that that energy that uh, confidence that young india has in itself to go out and compete with the rest of the world on equal footing is what we were wanting to showcase and then these were the two right set of uh, you know brand ambassadors for that another thing that makes commercial sense for us is that in a country where you have so many languages so many customs one thing that binds us all indians is cricket so yashasvi jaiswal or siraj is as popular in up or in kerala or in west bengal so cricket has no language body language has no language they have their own language and hence these two people now just looking at uh, modernic lifestyle since you know since the company was formed in 2021 with the merging together how has uh, you know the move panned out and what are the synergies and the efficiencies that have been leveraged right so these were two uh, different brands appealing to two different set of consumers and they still do so uh, dixie is a is primarily a men's innerwear brand we have a small uh, women's component also focused on the mid to uh, lower middle uh, socio economic segment of consumers uh, and consequently also looking at tier 2 tier 3 type of towns okay when you look at enamor it is mid premium to premium lingerie brand female consumers the brand has presence across uh, channels including online exclusive stores department stores as well as multi brand stores so while they are two very different brands but ultimately they are both in apparel so when you look at synergies the synergies that were that have played out very very well for us for example is back end synergies uh, the fact that both of you are cotton centric businesses so in terms of buying in terms of manufacturing in terms of logistics many of those things you are able to leverage one with the other enamor had a very very fine nuance sense of design which once we've come together that consumer first thinking is something that we are bringing to dixie whereas dixie operates on a scale which is very very large so that is something which enamor can learn from or has learned from so those those are those are the type of synergies that you are able to work but otherwise they are independent brands they both have independent franchises Uh, at the front end at the distribution level at the sales level at the marketing level at design and product they have separate teams so you collaborate uh, but you don't compete uh but you know both tixi scott and uh, enama are very very well known well loved brands and they're probably your master brands so if you were to assess their performance how would you say both of them have done i'm only talking about the innerwear segment so both have uh, see unfortunately the last 3 4 years 2021 when we started this whole hypothesis of putting bring the two together covid one happened and then covid two happened and then we had a demand slump down and a commodity uh, you know scare when the commodities went through the roof across the world including cotton so we got two three the whole industry has had two three a uh, black swan events which typically would happen once in a century three of them happened in four years but like you said since we have two very strong brands and what happens is two things happen uh when something of this nature happens actually what happens is strong brands tend to get stronger because the consumer then when the consumer is uncertain he or she wants the confidence of a strong brand you know so also innerwear is a category where despite in covid so many categories were not doing well because there were no opportunities to go outside for example so dining outside was not working right outerwear and apparel wedding apparel because those things were either curtailed or were not happening shoes those categories were not doing well but innerwear is something that even if you're at home every morning you'll have a bath every day you'll wear so you know there are certain inherent resilience in this category because of that the category is done i mean category is done relatively better than some of the other people or bounce back relatively faster for our brands both dixie and enamor have done very well uh, while we had our share of challenges during covid like everybody else had uh, we've learnt our lessons uh, uh, we we are back on extremely good growth rate we are going double digit in dixie as well as enamor we've had fantastic progress in online for example 
when covid struck we took online as an opportunity today online is 25 30% of our business and growing very well uh now just coming to your apparel business you have two brands there both women targeted you have one is your dixie slims and uh, enamor exo so these are very small brands in comparison to your master brands so what are your plans for this because this is a very very cluttered market which you are also entering though you're riding on the established brand names so so i'll tell you a hypothesis that we have uh, the men's inner wear is roughly 20 22000 crore business okay uh, within that there are five to six brands which are more than 1000 crores each individually the men's inner wear is also 60 70% branded now if you look at women's inner wear similar size of business roughly give or take a few thousand crores but you hardly have one or two brands of any size less than 20% of that is branded so we have a very large market largely unbranded and beginning to consolidate and grow at a fast pace so there is there is all recipe for somebody to come in here and uh, you know take care, you know consolidate take take uh, this opportunity on the face of it invest behind it and grow very very rapidly we are lucky that we have something called slim sin dixie which is an economy women's uh, uh, brand playing across uh, you know panties leggings slips uh, uh, all these categories uh, we believe there's a tremendous opportunity in that segment enamor exo is a very very interesting thing that we are doing you know exo as the name suggests you know when you look at today youngsters short hand for hugs and kisses and things like that that's what exo means right now when we looked around we said there was no brand which was actually catering to this whole preteen teen segment of the consumer you know very very either unorganized or some international brands otherwise there was nobody nobody who was catering to that and we know today youngsters are far more conscious brand conscious they know what they want they have a mind of their own so we felt that this was a great opportunity to go back go to our consumers when they are just beginning their interaction with this category strategically also because then if you get in touch with them you help them through that formative years when their association with lingerie is just building up you'll probably have a customer for life so exo is a enamor sub brand which is in that segment we've just launched that recently uh very very encouraging response we've just launched that online first the response has been so great that we are now beginning to take that offline that just uh, this is a segue to my next question i was going to ask you about your distribution chat strategy online offline and the importance of exclusive stores uh, you know for your brands okay so let me address both separately because both have different given the profile and the nature of the brands the type of distribution or the go to market that you do is also different so let's let's take enamor first so enamor plays across all the four main channels so you have the general trade the mom and pop mbo universe as we talk about we are present uh, across more than 5 to 6000 mom and pop stores which sell lingerie along with other categories then we have like i told you post covid we realized the opportunity that online presented uh, in fact we used to do online earlier also but i think all of us during covid realized the importance of online and we invested in in online understanding within the organization creating those capabilities within the organization because online is a is a business by itself okay and you have to you know it it's it involves logistics and it involves direct interaction d to c with the customer consumer so we developed on all those things and the results are there because from a, from literally nothing we are today uh, you know we we've, we've grown probably 15 16 times on the online front in the last 3 4 years so that's been a great success for us uh, around the same time department stores we've always been there and amazon has been a leading brand in department stores continues to be around the same time we realized that exclusive stores is another opportunity because as we uh, were expanding our categories from lingerie we went to panties and then we went to casual and athleisure the mom and pop stores can only give you so much space because one they are not they don't have that size plus they they are cluttered and they have multiple other brands and categories that they 
obviously also take. So any one brand to get the type of space that you want to develop categories and really reach out to the customer is difficult there. So on the, so exclusive stores was an opportunity where we said we will be able to showcase the brand in the true manner in which we want it to be showcased. It's, it's uh, also a place where we can actually spend time educating the consumer because we believe lingerie is a category where a huge amount of consumer education is required. The right type of bra, the right fitting bra, right the, dif the different bras for different occasions, different body types. And that's something you can only do when you control your retail. So that's our element. It's again, extremely successful, very fast growing. We have upwards of 70 stores now. Within the next two years, we should be adding another 40 to 50 stores every year. Uh, so that's you... on the enamel piece. Okay. Now, when I come to Dixie, uh, Dixie, the brand is, is a mass brand and is very, very widely distributed. In fact, innerwear in apparel is one of the most widely distributed category. It is quasi FMCG. It is closer to FMCG in terms of distribution, unlike apparel, which uses either, you know, exclusive stores or uh, department stores primarily. So Dixie has uh, upwards of 1 lakh plus outlets that we that we service, small mom and pop stores across the country, which is very, very efficient for this category. We also have a fast growing online business. Dixie is not present in the department store and the exclusive store universe because we don't, we believe that the price points at which we sell, the consumers that which we sell, we are best served either online or through the multi-brand multi -brand outlet route. So overall, if you were to tell me how much of your percentage of sales is coming from online vis-a-vis -vis offline and how much from Metro and uh, Tier 1 cities vis-a-vis -vis, say Tier 2 and Tier 3? So again, different for different brands. In Amur, nearly 25% of the business comes online. And more than 60% of that comes from Metro's and Tier 1 towns. 60-65% and the remaining comes from the next tier of towns. Okay. So that's... Now, I, okay. That's, that's a significant that's, percent. That's one-fourth of your business. Yes. Yes, it does. And you know what? Again, online has played a great role in that. You know, just to tell you, uh, you know, before COVID, through direct distribution, I think we were servicing close to 6,000 PIN codes in India. Okay. Post-COVID, after online, we, are, we at one point of time last year, uh, I, my numbers are little, little dated. We were servicing close to 14,000 PIN codes. So that's the power of the mobile internet online. It lets you go to and gets you demand, captures demand from places which otherwise as a brand takes you longer to go. And Dixie Scott? Now, Dixie Scott, like I told you, because we are such mass distributed, nearly 95% of the business comes from mom and pop stores. 4 to 5% comes from online. The other two channels now, we don't play. Now coming to, you know, your advertising and your marketing efforts, how has, you know, like you said, that uh, you are uh, in Amma particularly because of digital, the distribution strategy has changed with 25% now coming from uh, distribution. How has your media mix also in, uh, evolved? Is TV still the preferred uh, channel or is it there also, are you now more skewed towards digital and performance marketing? So, uh, Simran, be it distribution, be it uh, media consumption, one thing that we follow and everybody should follow is the consumer first approach. You know, wherever the consumer is, you need to be there. In an Amur, we realize there's a set of consumers who now only shop in malls. Okay. Now, there's a set, there, there are a set of consumers who only go to malls. So, hence, a whole department store and an ex exclusive store strategy in malls was put in place because for this consumer, if you might be having any number of stores outside in the high streets, but if this consumer, she's not going there only, then for her, you're a blind spot, right? So, similar, so, so, th so that's how the distribution strategy was crafted. Now, if I look at media, okay, now digital, see, if you look at the last 20, 25 years plus, plus there was print and out of home and then television expanded during Asian games and then 91, 92, I think uh, when satellite television came, the boom and all the channels came and things moved to television. If you look today, now in the last 7, 8, 10 years with rapid, you know, this one phone, that mobile that we have has changed the way we look at things and how we consume 
the, how we consume media right now today it's it's so amazing you go to a small town and you ask somebody that where did you hear of this the first time and that consumer will point out to their phone and say i saw it on youtube i saw or i i saw it somewhere else now if that is where the consumer is as a marketer you also have to be there so what has happened in the last few years is that a lot of our budgets have moved to digital especially for the enamor brand uh, you know it's primarily digital there is an element of uh, television that we continue to do but it's also very focused and then we do a lot of in store and out of home so holdings and because apparel is again something which the, when you showcase that in the larger than life uh, imagery it it does make an impact and in store is extremely critical so those are the elements of media that you use for enamor dixie like i told you it's distributed in more than a lakh outlets uh, uh, hence in those stores since you do not have recourse to the type of retail that you have in enamor what you do is you have to be present in the consumer's mind map in the reference set of basket of brands and that um as something like a television does far more efficiently in in the case of dixie while say, having said that the importance of digital in dixie is also grown 3 4 years ago we did not even have a digital footprint to talk about in dixie today we have a lakh plus uh, you know uh, <clears throat> instagram followers we have a million plus facebook followers we do active uh, influencer programs and 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 the like so digital is something that is obviously increasing in uh, um, importance everywhere uh, are you looking to up your ad spends this year and if so by what percentage also if you just tell so it's, it's it's already been done when you when you when you have a high decibel campaign like that you take celebrities what you do is you also obviously want to be out there right and uh, so percentage wise i think it's close to 50 60% increase in the case of dixie this year uh also because we have two great celebrities and a great campaign so you need to go out and talk about that uh the other reason is that uh, uh see my tg is men 18 to 45 and a certain socio economic uh, <clears throat> or a certain <clears throat> uh, social class now if you look at what this tg likes there's cricket and then there is politics or news or the you know, you know, current affairs things like that okay these are the two big things now in india every 5 years we have general elections that becomes a great uh, opportunity uh, for you to be able to get a lot of this tg at one place so our campaign has been launched we are primarily all over the news channels and on youtube and on media where people are talking about the the general elections we've uh, started the ads during the ipl playoffs and we have the cricket t20 world cup next next month so there are three marquee properties that we are sort of investing in and obviously they are they are costly they are expensive but they are also there because they have the type of reach and uh, finally what can we expect from uh, the company looking ahead and your marquee brands and also your apparel brands so you can expect you know you can always expect great products from us you can expect great consumer service from us uh, we've always prided on the fact that we are a consumer first organization we'll continue doing that you can you can expect a lot of excitement in the women space both on the economy segment as well as on the ramo segment uh, and we i mean i i still feel these are categories which are still under serviced which are still under penetrated and uh, there's a there's a huge amount of scope and with the brands that we have i think the sky is the limit very honestly and a larger market share your strategy that's, for that that's a consequence i think that should already be happening i would uh, uh, see we don't have something like a nielsen in this category we do internal surveys but according to us we would have gained share this year also shekhar thank you so much for your time thank you thank you and- so much Pleasure, pleasure talking. Thanks.